guys, welcome back to my channel. So today is another study strategies video and it's going to be focused on medicinal chemistry and pharmacology. So I'm going to base it on how I studied for last semester. I haven't started the next semester yet, of course, but um, I'm going to show you all my tips and tricks for how I studied. Honestly, for this class, I didn't do anything like super different or unique to study, um, but I just want to show you what I did in case you're kind of struggling and you need to see how somebody else is studying for this class. So if you're interested to see how I studied for medicinal chemistry, pharmacology, then keep on watching and let's get started. So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to show you how I studied for the asthma section just because it's just the easiest thing to show you, I feel like. Um, but here is my binder. So if you watched my therapeutic study strategies video, um, I had a big binder for that class as well. You know I like paper and pencil and colored pens. I'm a terrible millennial. I don't like looking at things on the computer. So this is my binder and you see all the tabs in there. Um, I have it broken up by disease state. Um, so it just keeps me organized and keeps everything separated the way I like. Alright, so how I study. So the very first thing I always do is watch the lectures, of course. You can't really study with anything without watching the lectures. Well, some people can, but not me. So I watch the lectures and I have the PowerPoint printed out as I watch the lectures. And while I'm watching it, I'm taking notes, I'm pausing it, um, sometimes I'm re-watching it to try to understand what he said. And um, I always just jot notes on my PowerPoint. Anything for clarification, if the professor says something on the lecture that wasn't on the PowerPoint, I'll jot that down. Um, just anything I might need for my own edification, I write that down on the PowerPoint. So that's the very first thing I do. Um, then I try to do my best to review the PowerPoints every night or um, maybe one day like later in the week. Because the more you see it, the more it kind of sticks in your memory. So I try to review them just to get some stuff started to commit to memory and things like that. Then what I would do if I needed to commit something to memory, like to memorize something specifically, can you guess what I did? Got out my whiteboard. So you've seen this in like so many videos, but I use my whiteboard all the time. Um, and that's how I commit stuff to memory. So I'll just write it over and over and over. Or um, if I want to make like a chart or something, but I don't want to waste paper and I want to write the chart over and over and over, I'll do that on here. Um, if I needed to know a pathway. So some of these um, topics we learned about had specific like signaling pathways and stuff that we needed to know. So I would write those over and over and over. Um, so whiteboard, always my best friend. So for this class, we had like three different professors and one of the professors would create study guides for us. So I used these like crazy. Um, basically, I would just go through and answer all the questions on the study guide um, and I would actually write down the answers. So I really knew that I knew it. If it was a question that I kind of struggled with the answer, I would also try to say it out loud like I was teaching it to someone. Um, because sometimes you can like write it down or copy it from your notes and you think you know it, but then if you go to try to say it or explain it to someone, you're like, I actually don't really know what I'm talking about. So I would do that a lot too. Um, but I would go through and answer every single question. If it said to write out a pathway, I would draw out the whole pathway at least once. Um, I would try to answer as thoroughly as possible and I would try to answer from memory not just from like finding it in the PowerPoint. I think a lot of people make that mistake and when I was teaching a lot of my students would make that mistake when an with answering questions on a study guide. They would read the question and then go straight to the PowerPoint and find the answer. But that that's just testing if you can find an answer. That's not testing if you know the answer, right? So you don't want to do a study guide until you've studied the material well enough to know how to answer them. It's almost like a practice test, right? Without multiple choice questions. So I, that's how I would treat it, like it's a test. So ask the question, can you answer it? Can you write it? Can you speak it to someone? To me that was very helpful. Um, and then after I would do the PowerPoint, I also made myself a, a study chart. So um, we had to know the chemical structures for a lot of these drugs. Um, depending on the professor, some of them we needed to know the specific structure. And for some professors, we just needed to know like the, um, the core of the structure of the uh, drugs that were in the same class so a lot of them would look really similar they would ha just have like a different substitution or something of a different um, functional group so I would study that according to how that professor wanted us to learn it um, and I would color code the classes of drugs so that when I'm taking a test I can picture okay I know that albuterol was on that page and it was purple and all the purple drugs were my short-acting bronchodilators so that would also help jog my memory 
And then of course I would put um, adverse effects on there. We needed to know that for this class and for therapeutics. Um, and then any other important information. Um, and so I would type these out as I was studying the PowerPoints. And then I would just go through them like daily, every night or something. I would look over them and try to commit as much of it to memory as possible. Um, but I tried not to just memorize it. I really did try to make sense of it. So like why is this the way it is? So why is the half-life so short or so long? Chemically, what's happening with this molecule to make it so? And things like that. So that really helped me, um, especially if the professor was really good at explaining it. That was very helpful. Um, but that's how I do it because I can't, I'm just not a memorizer. I just cannot sit there and memorize ran what I see as random facts. I need to know why. So I really advise you to do that if you're like me and you struggle to just remember things. Um, really work to understand and know why because then you'll just know it you'll just remember it because it makes sense right not just because you're memorizing it the last thing i would do to really uh, lock in those structures is i made a powerpoint um basically of like flashcards so i didn't draw them out on actual flashcards because that would have taken me forever and they would have looked terrible and not like um what they would look like on a test so when I was studying, I would copy and paste the chemical structures from the PowerPoint onto a new PowerPoint. Um, and then in the little like notes box underneath, I would put the name of that drug. So when I was studying, I would make it like flashcards. I would shuffle them all up and then I would go through and look at the structures and see if I could say what that structure was. And that was really helpful because for some of our exams, the question was like identify what this drug is. And so if I didn't do that, I would have just completely lost all of those points. So that was very helpful to me. Of course, if your school doesn't need you to memorize the specific structures, then that's not necessary. But um, I found that to be very helpful. I wanted to make a Quizlet of them, but you had to like pay a premium to put images on your flashcards. So I was like, okay, that's not happening. So I made my own. But you can, of course, do it any way you want. You can draw them on actual flashcards, um, just whatever. But that's... That was the quickest and easiest way that I found to do it, so it worked for me. And that's it. That's really all I did. So to summarize what I just said, I watched the lectures. I would review the PowerPoints until it was pretty clear with the information. I would answer every single question on the study guides um, in complete sentences. <laughs> and um, if the professor didn't provide a study guide, I would take the learning objectives. I'm pretty sure every school will give you learning objectives for that like topic, that section, whatever. Um, if not, just make up your own questions. Go through the PowerPoint and try to make your own test. And that is a really great way to study as well. Um, so I would do the study guide. I made myself a color-coded chart and um, had all the information about all the drugs on it that I needed. And I would review that nightly. Um, and then I made myself a PowerPoint of just the images of the drugs to try to memorize the structures. So hopefully that's helpful for you if you're looking for different ways to study for medicinal chemistry or pharmacology. I know it can be really daunting, especially if you're not a chemistry person. It can be really difficult, but always study in more than one way. That's my biggest recommendation. Don't just like look at the PowerPoint and be like, okay, I studied. Or don't just answer the study guide and be like, okay, I studied. Like do several different things because that really gets it solidified in your head. You know what I mean? All right, so that's it for this video. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or email me or message me on any of my social media. If you've taken this class, go ahead and leave us your advice for how you studied for the class. We'd love to hear all the different ways that people study. And you can always take little tips from different people and combine it into what works for you. Um, and I might want to use some of them next semester because I might be struggling, who knows, you know? Every semester, I feel like I change how I study, so it's important to have different techniques in your in your bag so you know how to adjust if you're struggling. Any other questions for me, please email me or contact me on social media, and I will see you in my next video.